Hi, today we're making another family and friend favorite recipe called uh, chicken and olives. Basically, uh, the chicken and the olives are the star of the dish, but there are quite a lot of other ingredients. And today my daughter Alana is with me. She's going to hang out and uh, watch me so she can learn how to make this recipe along with you. So, uh, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to go sit down and watch? Sure. Make sure you ask questions so I know, uh, <laughs> you're, I know you're uh, watching and listening. <laughs> This is a recipe for a crowd. I, a lot of my recipes are like that um, because we never know who's popping in here, but we also just like to have leftovers. Our main thing is having leftovers on Monday and during the week. Right, Lana? <laughs> All right, so I use drumsticks and thighs with the bone in and the skin on for this dish. And you can see that's what it looks like. I washed it all and I patted it. Uh, dry with paper towels because you don't want it to be wet when you start making this dish. You want it to be nice and dry. And um, I know people don't always like chicken with the bone or the skin, but for this recipe it crisps, crisps up nice in the oven so you're not going to really notice that skin. And if you do it with a skinless, boneless, it just doesn't come out as good. I know you can, you definitely can use it, but to me the, the chicken with the bone has more flavor and it comes out great. So what I want to do first is just salt and pepper the chicken. So again, I have my little salt and pepper shakers that we, uh, we like around here, right, Alana? <laughs> they light up and they do the job nice and easy. I always start with seasoning the, the chicken. The salt, we don't want to use too much of it because this, chick, this dish does have a lot of olives and olives are very salty and briny. So basically, um, it's very simple. You can just prep this and put it in your fridge and when you come home from work, check put it in the oven and it's all set. So again, we're going to start with garlic. I use a lot of garlic, but it cooks down really nice and it's not overpowering at all. So I usually use like a dozen if they're large cloves, but these were really small. So I peel them and I cut them in half and I used a little bit more like 18 cloves of garlic. I know that seems like a lot, but it's not, right? We like our garlic around here. And besides, you're only eating one piece, so you're probably only going to have a couple pieces of garlic, if any. And again, buy fresh garlic. Do not buy anything that's in the jar or um, in a container. You want it nice and fresh and just chop it up. So you spread the garlic around. Very easy so far, right, Lana? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we got garlic, and now we're going to add the olives. And what I do is I buy the deli olives. You can buy them already pitted, or you can buy them with the pit. It doesn't matter around here. We can, if you have small children or older, older people, you may want to buy the pitted. But the pitted, uh, with the pit is fine as well. And I usually buy the medley that's in the um, deli. But if you also, if you shop in um, restaurant uh, warehouses, you can buy the olives, the Kalamata olives that are in a jar like this. And or the Califerano is another brand that I like. These are really good olives. They're pitted already and you can buy them in a large jar. That's if you can't find them in the, in the deli section of the grocery store, which usually you can. So you just add your olives, and it's a lot, but again, we have uh, 12 pieces of chicken here, so we want to we wanna make sure we have a lot of olives. Right, Delana? And then the other two ingredients I add are artichoke hearts, and you can buy these already in a jar marinated, and you could just lightly strain them and add them into the chicken, or you can buy the ones in the can that are quartered. Again, I do strain the liquid because we, we're going we're gonna to make our own sauce, so, so we don't need that liquid. So we have the quartered artichoke hearts. I do not like to use the whole artichoke hearts. They have that little tough part of them that you don't want to be chewing. <laughs> right, Alana? Yeah. <laughs> you're still over there making sure you're paying, you're paying attention to me. <laughs> okay, and then the last ingredient I like to use for this dish is capers. Uh, this is why we don't add a lot of salt to this dish is because everything I'm adding is salty. The olives are salty, the capers are salty. And you don't even need to strain these. You're just gonna do like four maybe good heaping teaspoons. And I like to buy the, I like the Scalafani brand of the capers, but you can use whatever brand you like. Again, maybe two, three, four scoops of the capers. And that's it, that's your dish. Now we have, all we have to do is make the sauce that goes over it. How's that for easy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now the sauce, it's gonna be Olive oil, of course I use extra virgin olive oil, I mean, but you could use just regular olive oil. And what you want to do is do like a cup and a half of olive oil. And the chicken's going to cook in this juice and it comes out really tender. You basically can't even overcook it because the longer you cook it, the more tender it becomes. Alright, so that's a cup and a half of olive oil. 
and then we want to do our vinegars, okay? We have, uh, I used to use just strictly red wine vinegar, and I tried it even with just balsamic, but now I do a little bit of both. So what you want to do is a half a cup of the balsamic vinegar. Okay, that goes right in there. And then you want to do a half a cup of the red wine vinegar. This is going to make a nice sauce. Trust me. Juice is always the best. <laughs> it is. So we're going to do a half a cup of this. This is the uh, red wine vinegar, okay? Look at I guess I use this brand a lot. <laughs> okay, but you want to buy the good brands. All right, half a cup of the red wine vinegar. And then lastly, I want to do uh, fresh lemon juice. So I don't buy the lemon juice in the jar. What I do is I have one, I have one uh, juiced lemon already in here, and I'm going to do another half just to show you. So I just juice the fresh lemon, and however you want to juice it, I mean, you could do it by uh, just squeeze it over over the bowl, but then the seeds might get in there. <laughs> so I like to use this little contraption because it traps all the seeds. I was just don't want to do that as a kid. Yeah, this is the fun part, right? You like this little tool. All right, and then there's a little strainer there so you won't get any of the seeds. And don't throw these out because I constantly save these. I either use the zest for other recipes or when I'm really done with it, I throw in the garbage disposal and it makes it smell nice and fresh down there, right? Do not throw those out. Okay, so now I have about one and a half uh, lemons juiced. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this in, just like this, and we're gonna stir it to blend it. Okay, so it's like a lemony, vinegary, tangy sauce that's gonna cook over this chicken in it. It really, it really comes out great when it cooks down and all the flavors concentrate there, okay? See how easy that sauce is? You didn't know what was in that sauce, did you? No, they never know. They never know. It's like Danny when I made the, the pasta dish with him. He didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got the two, the two vinegars and the oil, and now I just want to add a little bit more salt, believe it or not, because that's just going to balance out the, uh, the acid that's in the, that, that juice. Okay, so we have that, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna pour that over, over the chicken, okay? So, just like that. You really are gonna love this. This is like such an easy dish. Now at this point, you can have this all prepped already now. Put it in your fridge and just let it sit, and when you come home from work, you just pop it right in the oven. And I do it on high, again, I do it um, convection roast, which is um, a little bit of a, a uh, faster cooking process at a high heat and it gets the chicken really crispy the skin and if you want to flip it halfway through you can and I cook it for a good hour and hour maybe hour and 15 minutes on that high um, sometimes if I notice the chicken is uh, skin is getting too dark I'll just turn the oven down to about 350 convection so basically that's it we're gonna put it in and also I just wanted to mention if sometimes you find that you don't have enough juice or it starts cooking down because the juice tends to dissipate when you're cooking you just take chicken stock and just um, you can even add a little bit now if you want the juice if you want the chicken to sit three quarters of the way up you can just add a little bit of chicken broth just to give it more um, more flavor and you know more juice so we're going to pop this in the oven again at uh, convection roast 425 and i'm going to show you in a little bit how crispy that chicken comes out okay there we go <laughs> all righty put this in here okay that's it we will we will come back shortly and i'll show you how that looks now we're going to do the sides that go along with the chicken and olives and i like to do the same sides all the time because if i don't they get mad at me so <laughs> We're going to do white rice and broccoli, and sometimes I do broccoli, Rob. Yeah. That's probably the only other thing I could do with that dish, okay? So as far as the broccoli, you guys know the deal. You just buy the fresh broccoli. I don't really buy the frozen or any of that. So what you do, what I do is you can either steam it or just blanch it. And then I like to blanch it because you don't want it to overcook. Um, so that means just kind of a quick blanch. <laughs> All right, so you want to salt your water the kosher salt and then you want to throw your broccoli in and it's already boiling so you want to add it to boiling water see how bright green turns right away what you don't want it to do is turn like gray <laughs> that means you overcooked it okay so just make sure it's under there that's all and you just want to let it come back up to a little bit of a, a boil like a medium boil and then you're going to start eating it before I even serve it right that's what they do. They attack the uh, they attack the broccoli. Now, 
<laughs> after I strain it, <laughs> I'm going to season it a little bit. So, they no. Like the they, oh, my God. That's why I buy so much. It does look like a lot, right? But, yeah, and then tomorrow we're going to have leftovers, chicken, and olives, and we're going to have a lot of broccoli <laughs> with it, too, right? Okay, so white rice. I like the jasmine rice because it's got a nice flavor to it. And basically, if you like a starchy, sticky rice, just don't rinse it before you cook it. Mm -hmm. If you want to take some of that starch out of your rice, you gotta rin you can rinse it and soak it. Uh, we like the sticky, starchy rice, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So rice is so simple. It's you know, two cups of rice, and then you just double the water. So if it's two cups of rice, how much water? Four. <laughs> All right, a little math going on here. All right, so we add the two cups of white rice. And then we're gonna add it all in one pot. So now we have the double of the water, which is the four cups. And I'm just using water. A lot of times I'll make like a lot of different rice dishes, Spanish rice, this and that, and then I'll use chicken stock in, in place of the water. And that gives it a nice um, uh, flavoring. But since we have such a rich dish, we're just doing plain white rice, nothing. The juice seeps into the Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't wanna, I don't wanna do chicken stock because then it's gonna be too much. All right, so now we want to just season the um, rice. So I, again, a little bit of salt. And we're going to bring it up. Actually, we're going to bring it up to a boil. It seems like a lot of salt, but it doesn't taste No, good. and this is, like I said, this is um, uh, sea salt. And sea salt is, actually has less sodium than table salt. So you could use sea salt, kosher salt, and then table salt has the most sodium. So it's very, you don't use as much. Mm -hmm. And then I like to do a little drop of olive oil. And then I have to have a little butter. Everyone has to have the butter and the rice, right? Yeah. So I would do like a tablespoon. And basically, when this comes up to a boil, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> All right. When this comes up to a boil, we're just going to stir it once. And then we're going to turn it right down to a simmer. And we're going to cut it. I have a lot of people here, by the way. <laughs> That's why I keep looking around. Um, we're going to bring it to a boil. We're going to stir it once. And then we're going to cover it. And you're not going to lift that rice. I mean, that cover for 20 minutes because it's going to take probably 18 to 20 minutes. It's going to be perfectly done. The problem with rice is everyone wants to peek in there and <laughs> see what's going on. And they lift the cover, and that's not what you do. All right, so we'll bring this up to a boil. Let's check on the broccoli. Ooh, see, see how nice that's getting? Now, you're going to know when it's done. After you do this a zillion times like me, you don't really have to taste it. <laughs> you can feel it. You'll be able to feel it. But right now it's... Well, honey? Like pasta. Yeah, like pasta. You won't have to time anything after you do this one. Mm. You just do this so many times, right? That's how you're with everything. You don't even measure it. How hard do you think it is for me to write these recipes down? I've never <laughs> even written any of these down. You can't really mess that chicken dish up because, yeah. you know, even if you don't like, people are like, I, don't, I, don't, I would never make that. I don't like olives. You don't have to eat the olives, but the olives are literally like I. I we, sometimes I don't eat the olives, but yeah, it's so good but it olives. gives it a nice flavor. And then sometimes I don't have like the artichokes, mm -hmm. so I've thrown in like roasted peppers, or I've thrown in well, other things like beans or whatever. But you could just wing it. Chicken's very versatile. Artichokes. Are the best. Well, we do chicken cacciatore, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's like really good. That's got the peppers and the mushrooms and. Believe it or not. I've oh yeah, we'll make a ch yeah. chicken cacciatore. That's another one we're gonna make, right? Yeah. All right. See how that's getting nice. And then what you're gonna do is I'm gonna strain this shortly, and then we're gonna season it. And I I like. What do you like on your broccoli? Just salt and oil. Yeah. A lot of times I just use olive oil in my vegetables. God, we do use a lot of olive oil around here, don't we? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's a wonder I go to Restaurant Depot. All right. But this is what I like. I like the the uh, garlic pepper. And that's what I sprinkle on there. You probably didn't even always? know that. Yeah, pretty much. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, not always. I shouldn't say always. You're not really losing any of the nutrients of the broccoli with this either. I know steaming they say is, okay. but basically you're not you're okay. not really as long as you don't overcook it. Once you start overcooking everything, that's why I just bring it to a boil, throw it in, and it's just a few minutes. I do that with like my potatoes before I roast them. Okay. I do that with a, a lot of my vegetables because you just want to have, you won't have to roast them as long, number one, and it just, it helps um, cool. bring out that, you know, the water. They don't really put anything else on broccoli besides. Well, a lot of people put butter on broccoli, but I, I can't have butter on broccoli. I'm talking about like, sometimes you do like, Cheddar cauliflower or something. Oh, like sauce, like yeah. cheese sauce? No, I don't. It's just very basic here. All right, so that's done. I'm going to just strain this really quick and I'll show. Oh, watch out. There's a lot of dogs around here. <laughs>
Three dogs to be exact, right, Alana? Yeah, me too. Oh, and of course he has to lay right where I cook and right where the action is, right? So that's it. Ooh, this is where you get your nice uh, facials. facials. <laughs> All right, so now we bring this back and then we're gonna just season it, Alana. See, it's done. Look how nice that is. Back to the extra virgin olive oil. Okay, I know. <laughs> I buy this by the gallon. <laughs> a lot. But you have to buy good oil, you know? And if you don't like the extra virgin, you can just use the regular olive oil. It's a little bit lighter. You could use vegetable oil, I guess, too. All right, and then I like to sprinkle the, uh, the garlic, see? And then a little bit of salt. You actually, you should be doing this. See, now you can make now you can make the chicken, now you can make the broccoli. The other day she watched me make the sauce, right? I watched the video. You watched the video, I know, and that was great. All right, the broccoli's done. And you know what? It's gonna cook, the piano's hot. It's gonna cook down a little bit more too there. All right, so the rice is boiling. Look, Alana. Well it's almost boiling. Hold on. You can hear it. You don't want to stir it until it comes up to a boil. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you that. And then this is where I'm going to put the timer on. This, I have to put the timer on because if you forget about the rice, you're in big trouble. 20 minutes, that's it, 20 minutes. Sometimes even 18, depending on your stove. Like every stove is different. This stove I know for the simmer, because it goes right to a simmer, it's usually about 18. So you're just going to bring that up to a boil. And what other rice do you like that I make? Pork fried rice? Oh, yeah. I like <laughs> have a good pork fried rice recipe, recipe homemade. Yeah, you do the egg. I haven't had that in a while. I know. I usually make that when we have leftover pork chops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leftover pork chops or pork tenderloin. It's a great recipe. Thank All right, you. so now, Alana, look, see, just for it. Now you don't want it to stick, so you're just going to take your, just give it a nice good stir, just one, and turn that right down right away. It was sticking a little, that's why I stirred a little longer, but mm -hmm. that's it. And then you cover it. 20 minutes, we will have fluffy rice, okay? All right, and then when the chicken comes out, we're going to plate this all up together, and then I'll show you the finished product. The chicken is ready to come out, and I wanted to show you ahead of time <laughs> how this is going to how this is going to look. Okay, now this is very hot, so make sure you don't. We did it on high heat, so we cook a little bit faster, but we also just basically get the chicken skin nice and crispy. And what I did in the meantime was I just basted it a little bit, just kept pouring the juice over the chicken and add a little bit of chicken stock as I went. Just the, water, uh, the juice will dissipate a little bit. So I want to take it very hot, be careful. Just kind of wanted to show you what it looked like. I'll put it over here on the island. How's that look, Alana? Are you still with me? Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> you always forget, don't forget to shut the oven off. It's a biggie. <laughs> All right, so you want to come over and check it out? Sure. Okay. All right, so we did the rice and the broccoli on the side. <laughs> And I wanted to show you the rice salon. You see how fluffy it, it was? 20 minutes. Didn't stick, nothing. See? You just do not open the oven. Can you touch it? You can touch it. I know. You want to stir everything. Okay. So now we're going to plate this up. And I wanted to show... Here, Lana. You put the rice on. And I have to get my serving spoon over here. I like when the chicken goes over the rice. Yeah, now can you put some broccoli on there too? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> well rounded meal here. We need a starch and a vegetable and a protein, right? Right, Dan? Oh, oh yeah. Dan's over there too. He's not mic'd up. <laughs> You're not mic'd up, Dan. <laughs> so, we have the rice and the broccoli. And now we're going to do the juice. You can do it. I'm going to take a little thigh. Okay. See how crispy it gets on top? And turn it over so, yeah, the pretty piece. All right, and now you want the juice. And the olives. Oh, and the olives. See that? Just right over the rice. That's why you need the, the, just the plain white rice for this dish, right, honey? Yep. We wouldn't want to do. Okay, there it is. And now we need Alana to taste test. All right. <laughs> we got to make sure it's cooled off when. <laughs> It'll be hot. Here, see, see how tender it is. You can show them how tender it is. See, it just falls right off the bone. Yep. Go ahead, cut it on. All right, now blow on it. <laughs> Looks like we're, uh... Uh-oh, that's... Oh, that's going to be a hot... That's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> that came right... Yeah, just wait. Just wait. I'll eat it. Okay, come on over, Dan. Have some. 
kind of hot, but it's good. Tender, juicy. Is it tender? You want to try a piece, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> Let me get you a fork. <laughs> Is this one of your favorites, Dan? Okay. Yum. It's hot, Danny. It's hot. Yeah, it is hot. A little mixed beef. <laughs> Do you like it with the broccoli? Or? Wait, wait. Okay. Oh, oh. oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's hot. Mm -hmm. No, it's no? not that hot. It's good. Is it good? All right. It's hot, isn't it? Two thumbs up. Okay. What are we going to say? All right. I guess we're going to... We're going to sign off. I hope you guys enjoyed this dish. And make sure you email me with any questions or... Um, artichokes. Pardon me? Oh, I like the artichokes. Oh, see? She likes the artichokes. And uh, email me with any questions, and I'll try to get yeah. back to you as soon as I can. Bon appetit. Oh, my God. Now they're going <laughs> to fight over it. Okay. All right. Say bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>